So in this video, we are just going to run through the TTO process. Um, so there's me and there's Sarah who's going to be um, just delivering this video so we can talk through both the documentation and the medication side of writing a GP discharge letter. So the first thing you do from your patient's record is you navigate to clinician workflow. And from here, you'll have various tabs available. So the first tab to start the medications off is this TTO meds tab. So from TTO meds, you just want to navigate to discharge medications. And you can see that this has been, this status is incomplete. So we can go to here and this launches the discharge reconciliation page. It's very similar to the admission reconciliation page. You can get to it through request for care plans, but you can do it all from these tabs here. So here you can see um, all the home medications and you can also see the inpatient prescribed medications and you can um, differentiate between them by the symbols. So scroll for home medications and inpatient medicines have this little hospital symbol. So this patient's come in and um, has had increased pain due to a fracture. So um, their regular paracetamol that was PRN in the community has been increased to regular and they've also been prescribed some oromorph. So when we're going through these medications, they've had so the pharmacy team have also documented that their patient has had COVID vaccines. So there's various things that you're not necessarily going to put on the discharge letter. So you could leave those unreconciled. So you won't start or stop them because if you stop any medications that completely removes them, it documents them as stopped. It takes them off the meds history. So the only time you're doing that is if you want someone to not continue with the medication. So if it's no longer appropriate, but if it's something that's documented um, and you're not reviewing it, you just leave it unreconciled. So the next we've got a tour of statin, so it's exactly the same as before, so we can just continue this onto the TTO, so we click continue new and then you'll see that you get the blue symbol, which means there's more information, which we can review at the end. Again, bisoprolols remain the same as an inpatient, so we carry on and we um, typically we would reconcile the ordered medication, but um, if they're the same, it doesn't matter. If you wanted to go say back to their drug history one, you could select the one that's the most appropriate. And so this patient's had increased pain, so we're actually going to keep the increased dose of the regular paracetamol, but we can get the GP to review that. Whilst they've been in hospital, we've also noticed that their blood pressure was raised, so they've actually increased the dose to five milligram, um, and we want to maintain that, so we will um, keep that dose. And then in hospital, they've had Oromorph prescribed, but we don't want to send them home on Oromorph. It's not appropriate necessarily in this instance to send someone home. So we are going to prescribe some codeine for an interim measure just while the pain's unmanaged. So you can just go into add from this page and um, prescribe something new for the discharge letter. And you can see here that you're prescribing into the discharge medication section. So as opposed to documenting history or inpatient and because you're in the discharge rec, it autos into that. So we'll just do some codeine. So we'll give them some 30 milligram four times a day when required for pain. And you can see that's loading in the background, so I can click done here and then that's loaded here. So then now we can go through and we can complete these um, extra pieces of information. So you can see there's 15 missing required details and anything that's still required is yellow. So this is not an admission medication. So you would select no. Anything that's new medicine, so admission med, no, will require an indication. It doesn't pop up as yellow. You just need to complete that. If you try and sign it off, it will pop up. So um, it will make you do that. So um, pain. You see, it also has a PRN for pain, so it will be duplicated. Day supply, you complete what is standard for your trust. So um, if this is a short course, so if you actually wanted to specify this was only for seven days, you complete seven. Royal Surrey and Ashford St Peter's have different um, policies as to what the minimum number of days supplied on discharge are. So just refer to that and that's actually in the quick reference guide as well. I don't want to specify because it difference, is different between the trusts. And then there's the GP to continue section. So we've prescribed this because the patient's in acute pain, but we don't necessarily want them to continue. So we can say GP to review. You have the options there. A tour of a statin was an admission med. So you just say yes and that will keep it as um, the same. So I'm going to give two weeks of this and GP to carry on. Yeah, and you can keep flicking through. And if you just click this, it'll take you to the next detail you've not done. So this is exactly the same by Zopralol. So you can see it's the same drug history. So it's admission meds and we don't need to change anything. And same again. So you just click through each of these. So now paracetamol, we've increased the dose um, technically because we've made it instead of um, PRN, 
we've made it to regular. So if we just put a dose change reason in here, then it shows that we've made a change to that. So we can um, just say dose change reason uh, increased pain. Um, but it is an admission med. So then what by having these two selected so is admission med, but with a dose change reason, that's how it pulls through to say that it is a um, a change to a, a home medication. So it's just about getting the right selection to get the right things through there. And then we just complete this and you maybe want GP to review this. They might go back to PRM once the pain's resolved. And then finally, we've got Ramipril. So this is the one that's um, increased quite significantly since drug history. So it is an admission med, but the dose has increased. So um, and you can document a reason. Obviously, um, there'll also be extra places in the actual letter. And then GP, you want them to review that or you want to, if, depending on how long the admission was and how stable they were, you can obviously select what's most appropriate for that. And then you can click sign off because all those blue sections are done. You have no missing required details, so it will sign off. And then you get this pop up. So this is the pop up to ask you whether or not you have finished with your meds. So if you want to do something, you need to go back and check. You don't need you don't complete this off. But if they are completely ready and you're ready for this to be screened by pharmacy, that's when you leak. So you, that's when you press OK on this. If it's not complete, you can unselect this box. But by leaving this box ticked and pressing OK, it generates a medication for discharge task. And in this, you can um, write some information that pharmacy can see. It's just worth noting that this information appears very in a very, very small, quite insignificant area on the pharmacist's workflow. So if it's really important information, please also verbally communicate with staff. But um, that this then pops up with the task um, to pharmacy so they know to start screening the medication. So um, if you don't want to add anything extra, you can just sign it off from here. And now you'll see that that's completed that bit there. OK, so that's the discharge meds and I'll hand over to Sarah who can go through the, the letter part now. Let me stop sharing. Thank you, Katie. Can't promise my section will be any better um, or anywhere near as good. Right, so I've uh, finished on the TTO meds uh, tab and come to the discharge tab. Um, I've got some lots of documentation that's been recorded throughout the patient's stay with us. Um, and we have come to the problem list and I can see that the uh, patient has a few problems listed. There are already a couple of chronic problems that are there. If there isn't any chronic problems and you don't want to record any chronic problems, there will be a button here to say no chronic problems. There has to be a chronic problem to send the GP summary. So if there are no actual chronic problems, please press the button. Um, and you will also see um, this visit. If you have a, if you need to add a, di a discharging diagnosis now, you can do simply by typing in here, select this visit and start typing away. Um, but I'm quite happy. I'm going to use the fracture of femur, which was the admitting diagno um, diagnosis, which I can see here. And I'm going to modify that to discharging. And click on OK. And um, as Katie said, her blood pressure has actually increased and we have treated her for that. So I'm going to modify that and put that one to discharging as well. You can see there's a little green tick just here to say that that's done. The system's quite happy with that part. And come down to clinical summary. Um, this is um, some clinical summary that was added on admission for this patient um, because it's a test patient. There's nothing that makes any sense in there, I'm afraid. You can add more if you need to um, or amend in any way and save. Okay, come down to the plan and requested actions and this is information for the um, for the GP specifically. Um, obviously, the, it's uh, information for the patient as well, but this is mostly for what you want the GP to do. So you want the GP to uh, review 
you'd add more notes here and click on save. There are lots of other sections that you can complete if you need to. That's completely up to you uh, for whatever is clinically appropriate for the patient. Uh, come down here and click on GP discharging letter and change that to awaiting final sign off and submit. I want to, uh, if there is a, already a, an existing summary, I want to open the existing summary. If there isn't, this box won't appear. And I always want to revise the note. You can actually hide this so that it doesn't come up again, but you always revise the note. <coughs> and just remember to click on this little icon here as you hover over, it becomes available. And that is to make sure that the, it is the most up-to-date version possible. So if anybody else is adding any more information in, you click on the here. You scroll down, check the information. You can see that your clinical summaries come through. Um, there's no known allergies. I can see that the TTO has been uh, included in this and also that the um, pharmacist review has not been completed. Once that's done, that will update automatically and also put their name in here. Uh, laboratory results, you can tag laboratory la laboratory results uh, in the screen that we were in previously. You just highlight the result that you want and click on the tag button that should be over on the right hand side. You'll get a little um, clipboard at the side here and you just drag and drop in into the laboratory results and that will that will display as a table. I haven't got any for this patient, so that's blank. Um, and then come down. I'm happy. I'm going to sign. And that's that done. Um, that you might well find that the MDT will contribute to the um, to the GP summary. They will need to input their information and also sign the letter. When the discharge coordinating nurse or whomever is coordinating the discharge advises you that the, the patient is ready to go home, you would then complete the person completing record. But Katie, I believe you're going to say something about um, changing your TTO if you need to before you sign. Yeah, thank you. So one thing to note, so once you've sent it to pharmacy, so we did that at the end of the TTO med section, once you've sent it to pharmacy, when pharmacy are screening that the TTO meds, they will lock that section of the letter. So that means that they're, that nothing can be changed whilst they're screening it so that they're not change, like screening something, signing it off and then it changes and they're putting their name to something they haven't seen. So they lock that process and that remains locked unless um, there needs to be a change. So if you need to then go back in and change the TTO meds section, you will need to contact pharmacy. If you try and change anything, it will let you get right up to the point where you press sign and then it will say you can't because it's locked. So you'll need to contact pharmacy and get them to unlock the TTO and they can do that and then you can um, update that and you can, and when you finish updating, similarly to when you finish the discharge rec, you will um, get the option to send that to pharmacy and they will get an updated TTO request to screen. So similarly to how when they get one to screen a TTO, they get one basically to say there's been additional items added. Um, and it's just important that then once you've obviously updated those TTO meds, when you go back into the letter to sign it, that you do that refresh step that Sarah showed to make sure that the most up to date information is in there. Yeah, that's me. Thank you, Katie. Um, I'm literally going to just pop that in just to show that this is pulling through. Um, click on when you're, um, the TTO is completely done and everybody has inputted into the GP summary as required, do the person completing. So you click on here. You can scroll through if you want to, but or you can click on there to go straight to it. Click on the drop down, person completing, put your role in and your identifier and your bleep number and then click on the green tick to sign. <coughs> and again, come to the discharge letter, open the existing one, revise the note. 
click on the refresh. I'll just show you the point of the refresh because the MDT should not have pulled through. There's no MDT there. So you really must pull, click on that refresh just here. And then the MDT information is, is present. Just make sure. And also the person completing record has also been added. Click on sign. And that is the doctor's part of discharge completed. The nurse will complete the key discharge information and specifically the key discharge details. And at that point, once the key discharge information here is populated, as, as I say, specifically key discharge details, then the GP has already been sent the summary. And I think that is it, Katie. Yeah, I agree. I think that's the whole workflow. Brilliant. Thank you.